I like stuff. I like museums. I like how stuff is displayed in museums. And I also like this very cool frame that I found at Goodwill for only five bucks. The artwork inside probably looked nice in someone's home at some time, but I doubt that the photos held any personal connection to the previous owner. This frame, some scrap lumber, a little bit of work and some paint, will soon be a display for stuff from my own personal collection. Speaking of stuff, it's piling up everywhere, it seems, especially in my garage. So I'll try to get rid of various pieces of scrap lumber. The long sides are from an old packing pallet, while the top and bottom are just leftover plywood. The whole thing will be painted, so it's okay if I'm not using the best lumber. A box like this is one of the easiest things for anyone to make. There are still some rough edges and blade marks to smooth away before assembly, and I'll use wood putty to fill the nail holes later. The paper backing was applied with double-sided tape. I'll need to remove that before the outer frame can be glued to the wooden box that I just made. I won't need any mechanical fasteners to hold these parts together. The carpenter's glue will be enough. I'll use clamps to hold them in place, wipe off the excess glue, leave it alone until tomorrow, and then I can start painting.
There are really only three colors used on this project, if you don't count the primer. And you saw me sand the frame earlier, so the red paint should not be peeling away as I remove the tape. But you can see that it is. So instead of sanding the peeled areas and respraying the red, I'll embrace those imperfections and take it a step further by distressing all the surfaces to match. I'll wet sand the red and the silver so that more of the colors beneath them will peek through. A little bit of acrylic craft paint in black is applied over the red and silver, and before it has a chance to completely dry, I'll use a slightly damp rag to wipe away the majority. What remains will mostly settle in the corners and the cracks. If the black film is covering up too much of the color, I can always come back and wet sand to bring out more of the red or the silver. These books were part of a series made by Time Life. I picked this one up at a garage sale for just one dollar. I never really read it, or even look at it, but it does have quite a few decent photographs. As you may have guessed from the color scheme, my shadow box will feature a German World War II theme. And what could be more German than this dog, a Focke Wolf? 190 and a BMW convertible. I have several reproduction items and a few letters on German stationery that I reprinted from the internet. Together they will form the background for my Luger and its leather carrying case. Well, it's actually a BB gun and a holster, both of which came from Amazon. This is just a rough idea of how the finished box will look. I still need to cut the backing board, glue the papers down, and then attach the other memorabilia. This was a sorry attempt of mine to create artwork for our family room. As art, it's pretty bad. But I did make it with some pretty nice 1 8 inch plywood, which already happens to have a coat of latex primer even on the back, which is very convenient for me. I gave it some thought and decided to make the written items a little more interesting. I went online and found a copy of the award given to recipients of the Iron Cross, and I also recreated a letter that might have been written to a loved one back home. And it goes something like, Liebe Mutter, hast du etwas Zeit für mich? Dann singe ich ein Lied für dich. 
von 99 Luftballons auf ihrem Weg zum Horizont. Denkst du vielleicht gerade an mich? Dann singe ich ein Lied für dich. I don't know. I just liked the sound of it, and it seemed kind of familiar for some reason. I placed blue masking tape at the outer edges of each photo and each piece of paper. I really only have one chance to glue these in the right position. And I was kind of surprised that the glue stick worked so well on painted plywood. At one point I was thinking about using a spray mount adhesive, but that tends to go everywhere. And once this whole thing is behind the glass, I won't need to worry about the edges of the papers or the photos. A few discreet and tiny holes have been drilled. Floral wire will hold the Luger, its holster, and the metals in place. Plus, with careful placement, they should be almost invisible. can just be twisted on the back to pull the items tighter against the display side. And then it's just drill, wire, twist, and repeat until all of the war relics are tightly in place. The frame's original artwork had a sheet of foam core as a backing behind the photos. I cut it into strips, and with a little hot glue, they'll hold the glass against the inside of the frame.
few screws through the plywood will securely connect the background to the shadow box and frame. So, maybe this isn't really something that you would find in a museum. I'm starting to think of it as a display case that you might stumble across in an alpine version of a VFW hall. I could picture this in a darkly lit, smoke-filled room full of veterans. I wonder if they have train swap meets at VFW halls in Bavaria. But I guess if you were in Germany, they might not be veterans of foreign wars. Hmm. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and until next time, this has been Bob's Workshop. Take care.